doing it. You got you supposed to be happy you sitting there with Kid L. Why you mad? The Kid L podcast. Y'all ready, Rock? I'm ready. Five. Rocking and rolling, P O E G B is in the building. How you doing today, bro? What's good, man? You smoking something strong, man? Always. The gumbo smells, the, smells like gumbo. Nice little gumbo pack. Yeah. A mixture of a little of this, a little mixture of a little of that. You make it yourself? No, I got got somebody who I, who I rock with. You know, sometimes I may go out of town and get it myself, though. Yeah. Nice Our, little trip to Cali. Gumbo is like a New Orleans thing, right? Yeah, but that's you know because it's a mixture of everything, so that's what that's why I call it for the weed. You uh, know? Okay, cool. Nice little gumbo pack. Um, today we're talking about stoner music, man. We're talking about something that's kind of in there, not in there. Sometimes it's, it's all around. Snoop Dogg was one of the uh, originators of this kind of music, right? Yeah, Snoop and Wiz kind of took it over. It's not not really a lane like that. You got a few of them here and there. We got people who talk about it, but like really just sit down and make whole albums. You don't really get it like that. And yeah. you got somebody like me who, you know what I'm saying? In that lane right now, you know what I'm saying? Driving, steering the wheel with it. Well, there's a whole community for it, right, at the end of the day. Yes, yes. And that's that's exactly why I make the music, for the for the community like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Roll up, put on some POEGB. Talk about yourself, man. Let's talk about Day Zero. Um, where are you from, bro? Well, from Detroit, west side, seven miles, where I grew up. You know what I'm saying? I moved around a couple times here and there, but seven mile, main staple for real. For sure. Um, And when you were growing up, man, when did you decide that music was going to be a part of your life? Uh, well, I I didn't think it was going to be a part of my life like that, but I always grew up, like, loving music. You know, my people love music. Used to be driving out of town with my uncle. He always had the R&B on. Then my older sister, she had the rap R&B, too. So I got different flavors here and there. Being in church with my grandma, had to, uh go to choir rehearsal and all that. So music has always been there. I used to be down in my basement, rapping in the mirror to myself, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I picked it up early and uh, ride with my pops too. He used to always have on some Tupac. Even when his radio was broke, he had a radio in the back with the Tupac tape playing just Man. so he could go. So music always been around for me. I ain't gonna lie, that's all my dad used to listen to for real. It's like Tupac. West Coast music, that Tupac, uh. that Snoop Dogg. I grew up on that when I was with him. Uh, that's... That was basically it for real. Like, he loved Tupac. That was his favorite artist. So, like, he probably Ice Cube here and there. Like, I remember he had, like, a uh, a tape of all old videos from the 90s. I stole that from him. So that's, <laughs> that's how I was. Another reason how I get up on a whole bunch of music. I used to watch that tape every day. I ain't had cable like that when I was young. So dope. that was my videotape for a minute. So. Yeah, man. Yeah. That influence is crazy that it came from all the way across the country to here, right? And people yeah. were influenced by it. Um, so you're getting all these sounds from your dad, like you're hearing all these sounds and everything like that. Uh, when's the first time you officially get inside of a studio? Oof, I want to say maybe like 2013. Mm. That was my first time ever getting inside the studio. I was up at college. Uh, my homeboys, it was probably like our last year up there. I used to hoop. So like we ain't had nothing else to do. Season over with. My guys found the studio. They was rapping. I used to freestyle up there. You know what I'm saying? We'd be playing around with some drunk shit, freestyle here and there. They are like, man, why don't you come to the studio? And there, from there, it, the rest was history. I came back to the city, linked up with my guys, Murph and them. And like, one night, we did a, a whole mixtape in like three days down there. Well, we, we basically did it one night for real, for real, but finished it up in like three days. Mm. And we've been going there since. For sure, man. I noticed that you guys have done notable, uh, have notable features on your guys' tracks, man. You guys have worked with the Dope Boys, you know what I'm saying? At yeah. a time where it was very hard to get any type of feature, you know, these days it's, I think you can probably hit up like a couple of them, but. <laughs> that's, it's all about who you know too sometimes yeah. here and there. Like, uh, me and Murph, we went to middle school with kid, so. For real? Uh, yeah, we went to uh, Luddington. Like, he a little, uh. A little younger than me, a few years younger than me. So I was like in eighth grade when he was probably like in the fifth. So I like just seeing people like in the streets, like just mingling here and there. Like I got actually the first one I got was from Payroll. Really? Yeah. I got my first feature from him. And then. What yeah, year was that? Uh, Like maybe like 2014, 15. Mm. Like that's when I dropped my very first project. I was uh, able to get him on there then. It went from there. I got a uh, kid and Dre on the song, and then from there, me and Dre built a relationship. And he basically been on like uh, the last few of my uh, smoke something projects. Cool. I was just in the studio with him Friday, actually, so he can get on the new one. Cool, man. Very cool. 
So you're work, you're you're building a name for yourself over these years and everything like that, man. Um, how far do you feel like the stoner music community uh, supported you? Do you feel like there is enough people in Michigan and across the country to help the help support the music, or do you feel like you might have to um, do some twists and turns to get more exposure? I don't think I have to do too many twists and turns, especially with all the stuff that's going on. Like this weekend, you got Hash Bash coming up. For sure, we got 420 coming up. Sorry. And that's when I'm dropping Smoke Some 3. Uh, they got events going on there. And I, I'm trying to get on one of the showcases and perform, too. So I don't think it's really too hard because, like, everybody really smoke weed. Like, <laughs> for real, for real. Who don't smoke weed? You know what I'm saying? And then the fact that I cater to it. So I don't think it'd be too hard for real. Yeah, man. Getting it, in, 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 like, getting Detroit to reciprocate stoner music more would be super interesting to see happening. Because right now you get glimpses of it. Like, a rapper yeah. will talk about it. Street rap's really hot right now. Trap rap had like a little bit of its run, it's still kind of running a little bit. Drill rap didn't really last nah. too crazy, but that'd be a whole new breakout. Scam rap was a thing. That was I a mean, th- it still is a little bit. Like people yeah. still listen to that type of music, so but a little bit, yeah. <laughs> I'm but, trying. I'm trying to make it uh, a thing. Though. Like you said, they talk about it here and there, but like my whole album, like my whole Smoke Some series, cater basically to this. Smoking weed for real, for real. Sure. Like, like, uh, like they say on the wood in the beginning, make a whole album about smoking weed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's that's what I'm on. Yeah. Talk about the first tape and the process of developing it, man. Uh, well, that came on really just trying to find myself for real, because I dropped a project before that just under the name GB. Yeah. Like just rapping. You know what I'm saying, talking shit, just hoes. You know what I'm saying, shit that I've been through in there. Like I said, I started. I didn't start smoking till I was like 21. So started smoking more weed and finding myself and I became like a Jay Mills currency and Wiz Khalifa fan all around that time. So like listening to that, that's the type of vibe I was on. So started my first project when I did that smoke some uh I had gathered a few different producers, uh, and was just vibing like that. And I just been going there ever since. Like I uh linked up with my guy Casino Troy. Yeah. He actually produced the whole smoke something too. With the Stoner Lifestyle, and he produced this whole one too. So me and him actually, it's a collaborative album. So very cool. Yeah, and that, uh, like I said, ever since that first one, I've been I've been just trying to keep that wave going because that's that's what I'm on right now. Yeah, what made you decide not to kind of take the angle that most of the rappers are taking these days? You know, there's a lot of violence, obviously, and all this the gangster talk and shit like that, which is cool. Obviously, it's its own lane. But what made you kind of steer towards this instead of that? Man, I always just tried to be be different for real uh steer away from the norm i mean shit that it ain't me like i got songs like that i can get on that because i've been through shit i've seen shit you know what i'm saying but that's just not me that ain't what i'm trying to portray like i chill i be kicking it i smoke weed you know what i'm saying so that's what i'm gonna be on so that's what i'm gonna give that's all i can give for real you know what i'm saying myself you know what I'm saying? i don't want to give nobody else perspective on nothing so yeah. but like i said i can get on those type of songs if if need be because i know sometimes that's what people want to hear but like i said i don't i usually don't make make music for other folks but at the same time i do so for sure uh and i know snoop dogg went viral for saying he's how much he smokes man it was some astronomical amount of weed right (laughs) what about you do you have anything in comparison to how much you smoke oh man i ain't nothing crazy like them to be honest man i ain't no no i ain't smoking the whole uh crazy ounce every day like that i mean i have smoked blue ounce <laughs> down in the day like don't get me wrong but on the average i smoke maybe a good four to five blunts a day honestly bro that's a lot bro like on the uh smoke one on the wake up smoke one on the way to work smoke one on my lunch break smoke one on my way home Smoke one when I get home, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> then I gotta I gotta smoke another one to fall asleep. So yeah, I'll be getting about uh, four to five a day, and then the weekend it it could be a little more depending on what I'm doing. I think they call it that's Pablo in when you wake up and you smoke a joint. It's like Pablo Escobar used to do that. It's be the first up. thing when you did when you I wake would, up. We just still call it wake and bacon. So oh, wake and bacon. That's yeah. a good one. Though. I ain't never heard the Pablo. I might have to use that one though. Yeah. I might have used a little Pablo joint. But damn, like what makes it like where if you woke up. 
is it do you feel chill already and it's like i want to feel more chill than this or do you wake up like damn i'm stressed out now i need to smoke some weed it depends like sometimes you do wake up like stressed out and shit like i need to hit like i got two dogs so sometimes no motherfucker wake me up barking and shit like oh man let me smoke this blood right quick before <laughs> i go deal with them so i can mellow out and be chill but that's how i just sometimes get my day started hit a little blunt just so i can be chill so I'll, anything that come at me throughout the day i'm already even kill with it like yeah. that's why certain shit don't even stretch me out throughout the day because i've been a blue one down i'm already blowed <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> i'll be chilling i'm um, guessing your studio process is like that right i mean you're probably just baked out in the studio too to keep the, the music sometimes, going. sometimes like you don't want to get too high because sometimes you'll be in a booth just like uh, you got two bars left my guy road we be in there like you got two bars left and i was like I done got too high, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna come back and finish it. But, like, it do be days where, you know what I'm saying? I might face one or two in there and just vibe out. Like, I was in there this morning by myself. Smoked a little blunt, finished up a verse. Like, I don't need to get too high when I'm in the studio, but mm-hmm. weed is for sure a necessity. <laughs> sure. Weed and water. Weed, weed and water. water. That's yeah. all you need to make a hit, right, basically. <laughs> um, what do you feel like music music wise was the most perceived al- received album from people and uh what songs do people reach out to you the most to talk about uh probably my high handsome album and my uh my stoner lifestyle album, both of those for the most part yeah like people like though like uh i be seeing those get posted like in people's stories the most like i got a uh, song called nobody part uh part two uh people like the video for that like I perform that a lot too, so and when I be performing that song, people are like, oh, I really I fuck with that song, I like that one. So yeah, I got uh people like my videos a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like my better views video, my uh and my new and more better views because of the smoking and shit, the aesthetics of all the videos. They were like, man, that shit like it be so straight. I got a video called Get High Too, uh featuring K Murph. We uh shot that on my birthday, turned it to a uh turned it to a whole video shoot. My guy brought the smoke cannon. Smoked the whole thing out. Yeah, like a, it's like a leaf blower, but we put the weed in it. Smoked the whole room out. Everybody had weed. Like my pops was in there. He was like, man, I ain't even had to roll up no more. I was so high in there. So, yeah. yeah. Wait, did you say K Murph? K Murph? Yeah. Why you look different? Oh shit, my bad, bro. He was in rapper mode when he was here last time. We had the frames and shit on. Oh, man, that's so fucking. I was like, I know you, but like, what? I'm like, what? Am- I was like, I knew, I was like, I know you, but do I know you? And then I'm like, wait a minute, motherfucker, what's been out here? All right, so, um, yeah, no, like, you're incorporating the vibes of L.A. is almost in essence it is. But at the same time, Detroit, I mean, there's marijuana facilities everywhere for a fucking reason out here, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's our but cousins anyway out there, so. For sure. But you know what's crazy, though? Like, L.A. does have smoker vibes, right? Like, for real, like, if you're out there, it's like you feel like driving and smoking. But Detroit doesn't, like, I don't feel like it has essentially smoker vibes as far as the uh atmosphere is concerned but everybody loves to smoke either way certain areas do for real like i go out to i've been out to cali often like i would call it my second home for real for real like i go out there like that like shout out to my people in cali by the way so uh and like i said there's certain areas here where i do get those vibes it'd be certain settings like certain events where i'm like oh i do feel like i'm back out here so i mean sometimes certain areas out there where it make me feel like i'm home so yeah, I guess you could if you still like Belle Isle. Belle Isle would be a sweet place to smoke out if you had to. Like I never smoked at Belle Isle. I'm but... not an outside smoking person. For real, you smoke uh, inside the crib? Yeah, man, I hate smoking outside, man. Why? It's hated, man. It's just not. It just takes away from it for me. Like, like yeah, like I just I hate it. It depends. Like the temperature got to be smooth. What's like, the op- optimal situation for you to have the best high of your life? I give you, I can give you the exact moment when I had the best high of my life. I will never forget that day. Yeah. I was actually out in Cali with my cousins. We was high boxing in the car, <laughs> <laughs> smoking these honey duchess. <laughs> this was like my first trip out there. No, this was probably my, my second or third trip out there. I took my cousin Evan out there with me. We smoking, passing the blunt. I'm so high in the back seat. I'm like, damn, this is like the second or third one. They're like, no, nah, this is still the first one. <laughs> I'm like, damn. <laughs> I was so fucked up in that backseat, man. It was so smoked out. Like, yeah. yeah. That was like, that was my first time smoking Honey Duchess, and I ain't stopped since. Man, the worst time I ever had was uh, my friend gave me a dab or something. Oh, I don't do those no more. Yeah. Out of a uh, bong. Yeah, I don't right? fuck with those no more. I took it and I literally told him to call the ambulance like five times. I was like, you, I'm, I was like, bro, Matt, you need to call the ambulance, bro. Like, I'm not gonna make it out of here alive, son. It was, yeah, it was dangerous, man. It's too much, bro. My homeboy at work had me do a, 
do a dab, and we was smoking. Man, it's like something just grabbed my whole fucking chest. Like, I'm coughing my shit up. My man, he he took a dab too. He, oh, oh, just coughing. Shit. Oh, yeah, this some shit ain't for me, man. Too much, yeah. bro. So you had you had the the bad trips too. Then you, I've had yeah, of of course everybody does. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You everybody. I know I'm pretty sure everybody does. It's been time I done smoked so much and uh, threw up. Oh my god! Man, I've been with, I've been with some. It was so many blunts in one session, and everybody just like just too much. I don't want to get a person who who it was that was with me, but they're like, man, we gotta go outside. <laughs> like, Are you good? Like, man, come on, man, just come outside with me right quick. Soon as we got yeah. outside, I think it's Earl. So yeah. yeah, I had a bad trip before, but I ain't gonna get into all that. <laughs> that was too crazy. <laughs> as far as uh, your musical career is concerned, man, what's been the most? Uh, What's been the most satisfying to you personally out of everything you've done? Uh, just like people that's close to me, like enjoying it, like seeing that they playing it when I'm not even asking them to play it, or like I somebody got my video on or some, or like I find my work and somebody I hear somebody playing it on a speaker, just stuff like that, or yeah. like uh. Like somebody in my, my little ones in my family or something rapping it, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. That's that's yeah. all satisfying to me. Just seeing, just seeing the people actually watching it, you know what I'm saying? Or that's smoking how, to it. You know what's crazy? Like even for me, my, my uh, like I've done, I've done a little bit of things, right? Like to, for some people, they'll be like, "I'm proud of you for that." And I'm like, "Damn, bro, I don't, I don't, I don't care about none of that shit." And then you know what was the most proud moment of like the last seven years of me doing this shit was? I read a YouTube comment from one of my podcasts, and somebody says, "Damn, this should have been longer." And that meant more to me than anything anybody's ever told me in the in my entire career. I was like, "Damn, bro, you really I mean, you watched was going crazy." Yeah, I was there. like, "You really watched my interview for an hour long, like, and you wanted more." I was like, "That's the that was like the that was cr- recent too, wasn't it?" Yeah, it was under the deep pot. Yeah, I was just about to say, I just seen it. I I, I, uh, I saw it was like one of the top comments under there. Like, yeah. this should have been longer. Yeah, yeah I, it was I, a, I it was a positive negative comment because they were saying you should have made it longer. But I didn't give a fuck. More so to me, I was like, "Damn, bro, like, damn, somebody's you know you know like the famous uh, writer saying is always leave people wanting more." Like, yeah. that's how I felt when I read that. I was like, damn, like, you really wanted more? Of it? Like, it's crazy. So when people listen to your music or reciting your lyrics, it has to, like, watching it happen, it must be, like, the craziest feeling, right? Yeah, like, even, like, like somebody you least, especially when it's somebody you least expect it. Like, just having somebody come to you, like, oh, man, I fuck with that song right there, bro. Yeah. Like, oh, damn, man, I need to listen to my shit. That's what's up. So if you walk through Oakland Mall right now, <laughs> how many people walk up to you, do you think? Oakland Mall? yeah. I'll be honest, probably it, it wouldn't be too many for real, for real. Like I'm, I'm, what about, I'm smiling shit. What, like, which mall? Which mall do you hit at? Uh, which me? One? Yeah, you won't catch me at no malls like that, like that no more. I used to be in Northland when that was banging. You might, <laughs> you might see me slide in Fairlane every now and then, but like man, I be ducked off, man. I don't be outside like that no more. Why you stop going outside? Man, I just be chilling. I be chilling. I got stuff to take care of. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, like, I be outside when it's necessary. You know what I'm saying? If I got something to do. Mm. But I really be chilling for the most part. If I ain't in the studio, at the gym, I'm chilling. You know, we have a, a very uh, notorious question that we ask people sometimes, and it gets them caught up in a lot of uh, problems. But I ask you it anyway. Uh, who's your top five artists from Detroit right now, man? My top five artists? K Murph. Dre Day, Ken Folk, Baby Bro, OPM Low. Okay, P-O-E cool. P.O.E. shit. Uh, for sure. That's fire. So it's all just your people type stuff. Yeah, but if you really, if you want me to go outside of that, uh, I, I give you Blade, Payroll, Big Sean, um, Let me see who I'm really be listening to like that for real, for real. Um, that's crazy. You stuck on three? I'm stuck on three. Damn. Because, no. All right. Fleas. That's one off of me too. Dusty McFly. Uh, Damn. So you have a mix of the old school and mid school. Yeah, because I that's I listen to a lot of the. That's what I came up on. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of that show and a lot of that shit still hit to me. Like I don't, I listen to some of these new Detroit rappers, you know what I'm saying, but not not like that, like not as much. Like, what do you feel like the discrepancy is between the old generation and the new generation as far as sound is concerned? I 
don't think you need to say it's really a disgrace because a lot of some of it do sound the same. Some of it do. Like I ain't gonna lie, but like I don't get it. Like shit, uh, some of it do sound the same to me. Like honestly, like a lot of it's changed. Like the little slurring and shit, the lean. That's probably what it is. These new drugs changes <laughs> changing the sounds of, of some of these songs. But a lot, a lot of them still got that. That same Detroit sound to it is just a lot of people flow is advanced and shit like that. It's just like the NBA, how people talk about the uh the nineties and how it is now, how more the skill set is better with some of these players. You know what I'm saying? They got Detroit rappers now got a little more stuff to it, like the auto tunes and they going more crazy with the samples and just they got a little more skill with it. But you're talking about the producers though, versus the artists. Yeah, itself. that too. Shout out I came from Oh, no, yeah, yeah the right. producers are changing the game for sure. The Shout producers. out all the engineers, producers, and videographers because they are making a lot of these rappers. So let's just be honest with it. You know what I'm saying? Expand. <laughs> we all know what it is. <laughs> if if some of these rappers, you know what I'm saying, that's worldwide, not just Detroit. If some of these rappers didn't have the best engineer behind them, the best videographer behind them, you know what I'm saying, the best producers behind them, a lot of this shit wouldn't hit. That's just a fact. You know what I'm saying? Even with some of my music, shit, shout out to my nigga Rose. Bank Rose, whatever y'all still call him, shout out to him. He make, he put a lot of sauce on my music that make it what it is. Like, shout out Freddy, 6 8 Ro, everybody who shot a video for me. They make it what it is. The facts, right? Like, that's the interesting thing. Like, when you're talking about the development of a song or the creation of a song, a lot of the times it starts with the beat. Because a lot of rappers that will come on here and be like, man, I just listen to the beat and then I go off of it. You know what I'm saying? So that means, like, that's the backbone of what you're creating in the first place. Like, you didn't make that beat. The rapper didn't make that beat in his head and go, like, all right, this is the beat that I'm going to use, and then I'm going to rap on top of it. He's like, all right, what are you giving me? I'm going to sort through all, all these beats and pick which one I want to work with. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Then that's why, that's why I tend to, in my music, I try to at least shout out anybody who I've worked with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Rose, man. That's one of my good friends. Bank <laughs> Rose is one of my good friends. He goes under Rose the Engineer now. Yeah. He has so. a studio in Russell Industrial Center. Go check him out. Because yeah, a lot of them people, they deserve they deserve a lot of credit because we don't see those people. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, they behind the scenes. So. Yeah. That's why I try to, when I'm posting something, I try to make sure I tag them, put their name on it. You know what I'm saying? Let them know who did what. So with your name being so surrounded by the smoker culture and by the, uh, you know, all this stuff, have you come out with your own strain yet? Have you come out with anything like that? No, I ain't really tapped into it like that. I had, uh, somebody was talking about some growing shit when I was out in Cali, but I ain't never really but Don't you think it would it make sense much. to start your own strain? Because your name is, like, surrounded by it. Everybody would buy it. They trust you with with weed quality, right? Like, isn't your weed, like, you're... Yeah, and I, actually, I got a, uh, I got a, my last name. People be saying I should use my last name. My last name is Granberry. <laughs> Come on, man! This Granberry is literally the best weed strain so, brand name ever, bro. Literally. So, uh, fucking, are you serious right now? That's like, <laughs> that's like God basically like All right, I got you, my boy. Like, I'm, that's that's the oop off the glass, and I'm gonna have to dunk it. So yeah, for I'm sure. about to really tap into. What makes that. uh, what's your favorite strain, man? Uh, still to this day, uh, it's the strain called Lullaby. Like, oh man, and then KK, that's one of my favorites. Mm. Uh, good Larry OG. You mm. know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not too picky. As long as you give me nice and straight, you know what I'm saying? A good little buzz. Is Runtz is Runtz overrated or do you think that's like on point? It used to be. It was at a point it was very overrated, especially during the pandemic. Oh my gosh. Everybody <laughs> had runs and you know, it was taxing back then, but I actually had a nice batch of runs. Shout out my guy. <sighs> Crazy. It depends on who you get it from, you know, because you got a lot of these fakers, all these nice packets. Here you go. Got some runs for you. I don't I do not do that. You ain't getting me with no nice package. Because like, I've smoked real runs right off Malibu. We got the real runs, you know what I'm saying? So I know what it look like, what it tastes like. So you ain't you ain't getting over on me with no. That's why I'm really, I try to stay away from exotics like that, all them Zaz and all that shit. Because like, a lot of the shit, you know what I'm saying, be having PGRs on them and people don't be really knowing what they doing or what they be having for real, for real. Yeah, right. There's a lot of phony marijuana out there, right? So you can can you literally pick it up, look at it, and know if it's a real OG, like if it's real uh, runs. Like you can just look at it and tell. For the most part, you can look at certain shit. You could uh, by the smell of it, how it break down. You can tell. Yeah. By certain, uh, you could tell. That's fucking crazy that you you you're that good at figuring that out. You know what's another crazy thing is like how uh, rappers are on like weed brands now. Like they're they're like sponsoring weed now. I had the payroll strand. You did? Was it good? Yeah, it was, it was fire. Was it fire? Yeah, yeah. it was fire. I think it's cool, but it's obviously, like, it's just, 
it's just a marketing thing, right? It's not like they created the strain or whatever the fuck. Yeah, and it's funny because he's not even in that type of lane like that for real. So, <laughs> like, uh, go ahead. I was saying like it's it's, it's somebody else who uh, coming out with a uh, with a weed strain too. So. We got Vezel has one, Snap Dog has one. Um, a lot of rap. Sada baby had one for a little while. He had like the shark one, I think it was called some shark OG. Shark Lotto. Yeah, man, we have to get that Granberry OG off the line. Why the not, line. man? Fuck it. What are you doing <laughs> with these events coming up, man? Like you said, there's these hash bash and stuff. Are you doing anything at these events? Uh, not at the hash bash. I'm probably just go roll through. You know what I'm saying? Pick stuff here and there. Uh, I did had a. Uh, I got to get the link back going. Drop my links here and there. But I am trying to get on the showcase for 420 exactly, because I am dropping Smoke Some Three on 420. Yeah. Uh, Do you work with Willie J Peso at all? Mm-mm. Why wouldn't you work with Lily J. Peso? That's literally, you You, you guys are twin brothers, basically. You know who <laughs> Lily J. Peso? You know who he is, at least? Yeah, I know who he is. Okay, yeah. Like, what the fuck? That makes so much sense for you guys to work together. Talk a little bit about uh, the music right now, man. What's the development stage for it? What can people look forward to? Uh, right now, like I said, I'm working on Smoke Some 3 with my guy, Casino Troy, who produced everything. Uh, I'm I'm actually in the final stages of everything, getting, like, last songs all finished up, mixed up getting it geared up so i can drop it on 420 exactly uh got a, you know because they be streaming platforms man so i got a couple videos lined up i'm getting ready to shoot so i can have those out before and after the release date i got a listening party on the 19th that i'm uh that i'm gonna be doing so this uh this month april 19th, yeah, april cool. 19th so if you want to slide at? through it'll be on uh right on seven mile next to bank road studios okay cool. it's uh my homeboy got a little ice cream shot with a little Spotting a little back of it where a nice little area. For sure. So, yeah, I'll remind you, let you know if you want to slide through. Yeah, yeah. This would be like my second listening party. I had one before. That show was a nice event. Had my guy, Mr. Mimosa, come through. Had the drinks going. DJ Me was on the ones and twos. Everybody was in there getting hot and enjoying the vibes. Cool, man. So you run your own events, too, and everything like that? Yeah, for the most part. I, like to, I do a lot of my own stuff. My cover arts, you know what I'm saying? I be doing K Murph cover art sometimes. You know I try to try to keep a lot of stuff in house. You know what I'm saying? Keep money in our own pockets. Very cool, man. Um, is there any projects or anything else you want to announce before we sign off, man? Uh, just shout out to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in the city, masterminds. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to take cash for the kicks. You know what I'm saying? Ground hustle on bubble on the t-shirt. I'm, I'm always supporting the city. You know what I'm saying? You, every time you go see me, probably go see me in some city clothes, something somebody made for the most part. Yeah. So, Look, man, we need to get serious about this Granberry shit, all right? I know <laughs> I know, we're just talking about it, but you need to really think about it, bro, because if your name is so associated with, the, with, the, with, with this particular community, you can really brand yourself major with that shit, bro. I mean, you got the personality for it. You know your shit about the weed. You got the music backing it up. Why not just fucking turn it into a major brand, bro? Yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to really get on that design the uh little packages since that's what y'all like. <laughs> I promise you, I don't smoke weed anymore. But if you do do it, I will be there smoking the biggest joint at the fucking event for the opening. Man, I promise you on that. I'm gonna have to try to get on that. My boy, I promise you, man. I'll bring all my boys. We'll, we'll all smoke it. That's the what's whole up. place up. I uh, appreciate you being a part of this, man. We're at Parallel Sound thank Studio. You, thank you. Hilo Visual Shootings Productions. We're out. Peace.